Good evening. Welcome to the Select Board Board of Health meeting on Wednesday, May 16th, 2018, here at 7.05 p.m. in the municipal offices. Um, we are being recorded. We have minutes of the previous meeting. Oh, yes, pledge. You know what? Pledge, it's not on here. pledge of allegiance. It is Sorry. on your annotated agenda. Oh, yes. Sorry. I'm to go like this. Back <laughs> I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Um, minutes of the previous meetings, um, April 11th and the 25th. I need to approve the minutes of April 11th and April 25th, 2018. Second. Is there any further discussion? None. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Wendy and Diana, for yes. that. Thank you very much. Um, select board announcements. Um, I just want to thank everyone for coming out to vote. Uh, the May turnout was uh, pretty high, actually, um, three times what the normal turnout is. And it was lovely to talk to people that I hadn't seen for and talked to for a while and also new, meet new people. So thank you. Um, we have the South County EMS uh, headquarters building is um, going to have an open house on Saturday, May 26th from 9 to 2 p.m. Um, we're hoping everyone in the community will want to come over and see our new ambulance building. It's a dedication ceremony. is going to be at 9 a.m., and um, but we will have the open house till 2. So whatever fits your schedule, come on over. I think it will be pretty fun. Great. I'm excited. Um, Trevor, you wanted to talk about the fun fair and the Deerfield Mile on well, Saturday? Just, yeah, Saturday, rain or shine, we have the uh, fun fair, 29th annual fun fair for the kids um, at DES. And we also have uh, the Deerfield Mile running. Um, so that, that'll start, I think, at 9. And um, they'll run, run around. So come, come early, get registered, line up. Um, and then they'll, they'll run the mile, and then we'll start with the uh, fun fair at 10, and I think it goes to 1.30. So a lot of fun. There's good raffles, um, a lot of fun stuff for the kids, as, as always. So please come and have Do a Do you have a handout time. for them? Um, it's all online now. Okay. <laughs> but I will. I can print something off okay. for you. Okay. Yep, no, we, do. we can do that. Yeah, we do. Thank you. Um, Homeland Security um, Council voted on Tuesday to uh, – for $28,165 for the November 3rd tabletop Deerfield River flood tabletop at the South Deerfield Fire Department. Um, but our response seems to be so good already that we might have to move it to the GCC um, building. Um, we'll have to see. I, I think it will be a little squishy. We're anticipating about 75 people. Yeah, so it's scheduled right now for South Deerfield Fire Department, um, the fire station, but um, I think we're going to move it up to GCC because it looks like we're on track to sign up a lot more people than we anticipated, which is pretty exciting. It will mm -hmm. be a dam failure, so we can practice our evacuation plans, and um, the end result of this is to have a supplement to our comprehensive emergency management plan, our SEMP plan, so that no matter who's here, we'll be able to know how many Jersey barriers we need, what roads are going to be shut down, how many police we need manned, what we have to ask for the National Guard, mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff. So it's very exciting. We'll have mapping. Um, I'm, I'm very excited about this. And the yeah. council was supportive, so that was really good. Um, right. You wanted to talk about the South County assessment? Yes, um, we're doing... Um, for, well, we're in the midst of hiring or, uh, or searching for a new director for South County Senior Center. And uh, we have Diane Cornwall is doing, a, um, doing an assessment. And I, I don't know if we were going to talk about that later, but I, I'll just say that um, she's doing a great and amazing job. She has um, reached out to a lot of the seniors. She's looked over kind of our funding, how we budget, what our needs are going to be. Um, it, it's, it's in the midst of it. We had a meeting last week um, just, to, just to, to begin the discussion of what things that we need to change um, and, and where we need to focus our attention. 
So um, things are moving in, in a good direction. I can't wait to report on that and get her report. Um, she's helping helping a bit with the hiring. She's just a wealth of knowledge, and um, I can't say enough good things about her. So really excited to have her help. Nice. Yeah, I'm actually meeting with her tomorrow. So. Oh, great. Yeah. Great. Um, and then the last thing I have for Slugman's comments is the Sunderland Parade is coming up. Um, we're we need help. We need help with ideas and uh, whatever. So <laughs> we need to sort that out in the next couple of weeks. Yes. Um, we do have some good ideas from people in the community, and we just kind of have to pull all that together and, and just show our support for our neighbor. Of yep, we want to celebrate. A so. lot of years. Um, Board of Health comments. Um, the piggery site assignment will be scheduled is scheduled for um, May 30th in uh, Butters mailings have been mailed out they were mailed today and the hearing notice is in the newspaper and right. um, I will have what you need prepared for that hearing okay, okay. thank you uh, um, and the only other thing I want to make sure is um, tick season is on us and um, it is really bad, all the younger baby I ticks. Know, really. <laughs> I know. First you said dam failure, and I thought, well, what did she mean, dam failure? <laughs> no, no, ticks are and then ticks us. are on us. <laughs> yeah, well, the, dam, the dam failure will wash away the ticks. But <laughs> yeah. anyway, Permirathin, you can buy Bronco horse spray. It's the cheapest thing at um, Tractor Supply, six ninety five. will last you most of the season. You spray down your pants. Um, shoes and it will keep the ticks away um, if you have cats make sure it's dried before you um, have it anywhere around your cats um, you can do the cotton balls or the dryer stuff and um, put your put on here for the mice but don't forget you've got chipmunks and squirrels and other animals in your yard so it's not as effective as you would think but it does work and it's good for wood piles and stuff like that. But we have a grant um, that is right now for $15. You can send your tick into on our website, Tick Report. The UMass Labs will do it for $15. It's almost the $200 test. There's just three, part, three tests of the $200 test that is not included. It includes all 19 of the bacterial um, infections. And just, just to clarify, this is a tick that you would find on your person, not yes. on a pet, but on, on yourself. Right. And you, you send it in, and for $15, it will, tell you, it will come up as credit on the $100 test. That's the one you want, but it's customized, so you will get almost the, everything of the $200 test. They know, as a Deerfield resident, it will come back, and it will give you the whole test. And what we're trying to do is um, the CDC is giving us money to track the percentage of our ticks that have Lyme disease. Because the last time we had a grant, it was um, about 33%, 33 to 36% of our ticks had Lyme disease. But what was trending and how we got this grant again is the bacterial infections, the secondary other bacterial infections are is bad or worse than Lyme, mm -hmm. and they are increasing, and in, when we had the last time we had data, was 2% to 5% of our ticks. So if you have a tick, send it in, and we get the data. It's not costing the town anything, and it's only $15, and then you either have a peace of mind, or you can take your t uh, paper with your report of whatever it's infected with to your primary care doctor and get the proper treatment. Perfect. Okay. Um, is there anything else that you want to add? Okay. If there's any questions, Lisa White, our public health nurse, will um, help, or Pat can help on the computer. Okay. Kevin, I'm sorry we're running a little bit late. Um, we'll go back yeah. to Wendy's um, administrative report for Kevin um, can talk to us so you don't have to stay all night. I appreciate that. I tell him he has one minute on each item. All right. <laughs> See you. Have a good night. <laughs> All right. Um, I'll start off real quick. Transfer station stickers. My understanding is you guys are going to talk about them later. They're going to remain at $65. Yeah. Um, but I just want to make something clear because I talked with Barb. As far as the senior discounts can be concerned for um, what it's going to be is going to be the same thing as last year. One small roll or one roll of small bags, uh, which is the 
uh, 15 gallon bags. If they want the large bags, they can have a credit of the $17 towards the 25 and pay the $8 difference. But that is going That's to be- what you're recommending? That, that would be, if, if somebody wants the large bags, the 37, and they don't want the small bag, the free small bags, mm -hmm. so they can use the free small bag, $17 credit, and then, an, and then an additional $8, and then they can have a large bag, roll okay. of bags. At the time of the sticker sale, at Town Hall only, no returns, because that was, I guess, one of the issues last year is once they left, they came back, and some of the bags, some of the rolls only had six, only had five, only had seven. Mm -hmm. So once the bag is open, it's open. It's yours. Okay. So they make that decision when they come they and pick the up the bags? They make the decision when they buy the sticker, because that is okay. when they are supposed to get their discount. Now, if they purchase their sticker at the transfer station, then I need to come up with... with receipt of some kind for them to be able to come to town hall mm -hmm. because otherwise they're going to have to write checks and everything else mm -hmm. to um because there's no cash right you know okay. so if somebody's got a check they can go ahead and do it there but if not they need to come in here because they'll they'll handle cash here okay gotcha. make sense yep all right we can we can vote to do the transfer stickers right now if you want kevin that's completely up to you um, okay. I move to keep the transfer station tick, uh, sticker fees to $65 per vehicle and $10 for additional vehicle for the same household and to provide a senior discount, 65 years and older, of one free roll of small bags or a credit, $17, for the return of a roll of small bags against the purchase of a roll of large bags. Um, said credit for small bags towards large bags or at point of sale only, no returns. Is there any further discussion? No. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you, Kevin. What's okay. your next? Okay. Um, you, I think, believe you have a DEP letter uh, yes. about the, uh, the transfer station, or excuse me, the, uh, uh, the cap landfill. Mm -hmm. uh, what we have is we have two small depressions over on the west side of the cap landfill. Um, we filled them in in the past but they've sunken back down and they are holding water and according to DEP, there is not to be any um, storm water resting on any landfill, any capped landfills. Okay. So this is just a letter basically stating that those two spots are there and you have to do it. But this time they're saying we have to have a, uh, a confident consultant to oversee the project and have a less than seven PSI footprint of the equipment that may go over the top of the landfill. Um, Can you just explain what a PSI? Uh, pounds per square inch. Yes, no, I know that, but what kind of equipment are we talking about? Uh, like, like a bobcat. Okay. Okay, so okay. a tracked bobcat. So right. if I'm gonna bring a tracked bobcat back and forth with the amount of dirt that I'm gonna have to go and, and bring out there, again, with, mm -hmm. with this tracked bobcat, I'm gonna have this track bobcat for a week or more. So what I'm looking now is I'm looking for the plans or the maps of the cap landfill to find out exactly where the edge of the cap is. Now, if I can go ahead and I can run a piece of machinery around the outside of the cap and dump my material there and then just move it from there over, then that's gonna be a, a lot faster and a lot more cost effective. So that's what I'm in the process of trying to do now. We have okay. until October 2018 to go ahead and, and complete this task. Um, I did get in touch with Jan to find out, Jan Amin from mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, Solid Waste Management to find out if she was quote unquote uh, considered a confident and no, uh, she says it looks like they're looking more for a engineer to be there, <clears throat> which I in turn got in touch with Larry Hansen down at DEP and asked, do we really need to have this consultant? And he says, this is what they're requiring now. Um, he says, you know, the guy doesn't have to be there the entire time. He says, you know, you can go ahead because I have to put together a plan and then submit the plan seven days before we decide that we're going to do it. Then they'll, mm -hmm. then they'll approve it or, or make amends to it. And then, we, and then we're allowed to go ahead and do the work. He's making it sound like as long as there's somebody there during the start and the finish of the project that we have to pay to be there, yep. they'd be okay with that. Okay. Instead of somebody being there all the time. Um, 
So basically I asked, I said, you know, what, why? You know, what is, what is, why, why am I spending more money than I have to spend? And this is, they were basically concerned about me breaking through the cap. He says, because quite honestly, he says, he didn't come out and say this, but he basically alluded to, if somebody breaks through the cap, usually they're not going to admit it, which I will agree with, because if you break through a cap, on average, from what I'm told, is about a $20,000 fix right mm -hmm. off the bat. And that's without even thinking about anything. So, again, I'm in the process of trying to take care of this. So Kevin, I just want you, you to aware, because you've seen the letter, so mm -hmm. that's the direction I'm heading in. And I'm trying to do this as the most cost-effective way as I possibly can. And how much would it cost to just hire an engineer? That, I mean, even if they oh, oh I, I, I'm not sure. I mean, we're we're going to be required to do it anyway, right. you know. So I'm sure we're, I'm sure it's going to cost us probably at least fifteen hundred bucks, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but again, you know, it's that part I'm not quite so concerned about. I'm more concerned about how I'm going to get the material from point A to point B, because like I said, if I have to go back and forth across with a bobcat, that bobcat bucket's not very good. I might as well go back and forth with a spoon in my hand, as far as I'm concerned, or a wheelbarrow. Um, you know what I mean? Can it's I ridiculous. just ask why? Why do you think we have a depression that keeps showing up? Uh, it's, it's just it, the Decay. it's settled over time. Okay. You know, it could be something that's under underground that is deteriorating to the point that it's just kind of once again settled down a little bit further. And, and so they're okay with us putting so much dirt on it that might actually weigh. Oh yeah, no, they're they're fine with that. They hmm. they don't want the water on top of it. So I says, but I thought the thought that that thought this <clears throat> excuse me this cap. Uh, wouldn't let any water in. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, so what's the problem? Well, the law says you will not have any standing water on a cap okay. landfill. Okay. And I said, okay, so that's where I just left it. I just was wondering what the PSI was going to be of all that dirt. Uh, they don't care about that part. They're more concerned about the, the downward pressure Digging. of a tire, you know, and, and realistically, what you're really looking at, you're looking at something that's going to make like a six inch rut. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, right now we're. Our green tractor that we have now, that John Deere, and, and the other John Deere that we had before that, is what we end up mowing it with, which is fairly comparable to about a 7 PSI footprint. So if you can run the John Deere tractor to mow, why can't you use a John Deere tractor to move dirt? They're under the impression that this does not have a 7 PSI footprint. So if I push the issue too much further, and open the Pandora's box too much further, I'm not sure how we're gonna mow, the, mow it. So if we go out there with a little mower, we're gonna be out there. I mean, because as it is now, we're out there two days with the mower. If we go out there with a regular mower, you're gonna send somebody out there for over a week, so. And it has to be mowed down every so it's often. Supposed mowed, it's supposed to be mowed twice a year. Twice a year. Yeah. So you'll unless put the plan put a, together. Unless we put a solar solar farm on it you can do the solar farm but again that's where that's where all of this came into play is where they're talking about the seven psi footprint mm. so mm. when they go ahead and they put this solar panel on there the concrete block that it's attached to has to be a certain size to be able to take it's its footprint and stretch it out far enough so you don't right. have more than seven pounds of pressure pushing down on one square inch mm -hmm. okay so you'll put a plan together and yeah let us know yep maybe okay. apex we'll talk Apex folks, maybe. I'm sorry, still here. The monitoring uh, engineers, maybe the future ones. Uh, yeah, possible future ones. Yeah, when it, when the bids come back in, yeah, yeah they're they're possible. Yeah. I mean, because there's there's multiple people we're looking at, you know, because once again we're looking at our costs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that makes sense, Kevin. Thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. Any any other questions on the DEP part? No. Transfer station. All right. Uh, just so you're all aware. Uh, we had a leak over at the senior center. Mm -hmm. um, it was one of the front uh, frost-free um, faucets that had an issue. Um, we're going to get somebody in there to fix it. Um, that how long has it been going? For a while. Yeah, it just happened that I one day, was, which yeah. was yesterday, two days ago. Two days ago. Two days ago. Yep. Yeah, yeah we meant because today's what Monday, Wednesday, Monday. Monday. I've, I've had some people ask me about the mold situation over there. Does somebody ever send anything to your best? About the what? Mold in the basement. We need to do. They do complain about yeah. cost. It's a, it's a for sure. smell is what it is. The actual yeah. mold down there is like next to nothing. I know. Um, right. We've already uh, okay. gone through, had somebody Please come go. through Sounds and good. give That's a price good. on going through and, and cleaning it so that way they can go ahead and reutilize it again. And 
Um, basically, the eighteen or twenty thousand dollars didn't want to be spent at that point in time. I, I, I just wanted to mention that I want to take a look at that report. Um, do you know, um, do you have? I don't that know. Who, yeah. who, you ha you might have. Yeah. Okay. So I'll leave that for another day. Uh, but no, you're talking about the senior center. Yeah, yeah. senior center. Yeah, we got it. We just made extra copies. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> um, okay. Thank you. Um, Sugarloaf Street Cemetery. Um, I was not able to meet Monday with the um, historical committee because uh, I had a previous engagement that I couldn't get out of. Uh, anyway, uh, John Nove and I are going to be meeting with Fetch Gerald Fence out there to look at how they're going to make that corner. Um, one suggestion was to go ahead and leave one of those, leave the corner open so that way there was more of a straight line of the fence. Um, and then the next thought was, was come from the back, come as far forward as you can on the property line. And then the last 10 feet, last post goes from there and it'll go diagonally across. I mean, granted, you won't be fencing in the entire cemetery, quote unquote, per se, but there's no stones or anything else that would be outside of that area. So that's one of the things they're looking at. Okay. Which is the one you prefer? It doesn't matter to me either way. To okay. be honest with you, you know, um, you know, one of the things that you know, like John said, he says, you know, would it be looking kind of strange having a second entrance on the side? Would that look a little weird? You know, would the other diagonal come into play? Um, they just going to have to get very creative with their brackets. But um, according to Jane, um, when she spoke with the person from Fitzgerald Fence when they were there, when she asked the questions about that corner and how they were going to make the corner, she was told that they know how to make brackets. So what? Unquote. What? What's the um, what's the issue? You can't put a post where it is because it's well, it would be it would be a really short because if you if you came out straight and mm -hmm. then where where they is this they alongside that other building? A short little run. You only have probably like maybe a five foot run instead of a ten foot run, so it would look a little off. So if they came out like this, and the last one they came across, you would still have the same amount of posts because again, if you add more posts, you're going to be adding more money, especially those large ones. Because they're contracted for so many posts and so many so many rails, so if you add, then you got to come up with more money for the installation and the cost of the material. But they didn't know that when they were bidding it. That I could not tell you. I have like zero. This this was put back on my plate beginning okay. of the week. All right. So I just want to make sure it's attractive. Yeah. Oh, correct. Right. Just make it as attractive you know, as possible. You know, I'm kind of I'm kind of I'm kind of agreeing with with the diagonal one because I think it would look. Unless you're standing right in front of it, you know, you mm -hmm. wouldn't be able to really tell. If you drive by, it'll look fine, you know. And again, if you drove by and you had that extra opening in there, that may look a little strange. Um, somebody may like it, somebody may not like it, you know. I'm is not, this the front corner? It would be the front corner. Next to that computer store? That is correct. Okay. And the opening would be probably about four feet. Okay. Roughly. Just, just make sure whatever it yep. looks best. The best well, again, choice. that's why I'm having I'm having the the, the historical because yeah. they're the ones that are it's pushing idea. for to have all this done. So it's it's really their say. It's more of you know like like the town common. Right. Uh, when you tell me what to do, I'll go ahead and do it. But I'm not going to do anything between now and then. Gotcha. Because too many people are telling me two different things all at the same time. Yep. So that's why I'm waiting for you to let me know what to do, and then I'll do it. Perfect. So okay. that's kind of that's my fine. plan. Thank you, Kevin. Um, a couple things I got up and coming for paving for FY18. It's going to be June uh, 20, 21, and 22. We're going to be doing Lee Road. It's going to be an inch and a half overlay, and it's going to go nice. from Mill Village all the way over to Stillwater, one run. Nice. Um, okay. And then we're going to finally do uh, Old Albany Road off of Upper Road. We're going to do a shim and a top on that. Um, speaking with Eversource, they said that they're pretty much done with their heavy equipment going back and forth, and that way I can utilize that money that we were able to um, acquire a few years ago. Great. Uh, so are you going to replace that culvert? No, that, that piece of pipe is a decent piece of pipe, and okay. to be honest with you, to go ahead and change it, to change up everything. Is it worth it? it, it it's not worth it. Okay. You, you open up too many other water. So water's still going through it, okay? Yeah. Okay. And and it's not it's it's not collapsed. It's in decent shape. Can I ask you one question sure, just about culverts? Um, I drove by well, last meeting. You were here talking about um, Mill Village. 
No, the, the other one up, Huzak, the end of Huzak. Um, come on to Huzak, onto Stillwater, there was that cut across where the guy was talking about. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, okay, you know I'm sorry, yes. Yeah. yes. So I drove by it, and I was trying to figure out what you were talking about, what, what it, I couldn't really see. What was the issue there? There was basically, he's got a if, house if, on the left side, okay, right? Okay, so There's if you're one looking house. at the house on the left, and you go just past the house a yep. little bit. If There's a little ravine. Left, did you notice a little ravine in there? Yeah, and then on the other see, side, a little see stream. pump in there? I the did had, see a bucket. Okay. I saw a bucket. All right, well, gotcha. there's a sump pump in there. And it was all dry, but. To it. So what okay. he does is he drops it right there in that hole, and he just runs his hose across the Because it fills up too much there for him? Yeah. And, and somehow or other, when that happens, he gets water in his basement. From there? I, I'm the messenger. Okay. So I just, <laughs> when I saw it, I couldn't I understand what the issue was. He but said when that fills up, he has water. That's a long ways. Yeah, it is. But again, uh, well, okay. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I'm not going to second <laughs> guess. I just thought, I couldn't understand where the issue was. So right. I just. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what I'm being told. Is that where he won down to put it in the small wall? Yeah, just a pipe across the street. Is there a no, there's a stream there somewhere, that right? A little, and then you'd have to actually what he'd have to do you'd to have be to able to get there is, is he would have to fill in that that area. Yeah. So that way he would have pitch. So if he filled in that area, he could actually make his own pitch to go to the brook. Right. But if he does that, then he also has to make sure that he does all the filtering in the proper way of making sure that that groundwater going into the next groundwater doesn't go ahead and affect anything. Okay. You know, between silt and, and right. any type of runoff. and We don't want to get involved. So. No, no. I just, just was curious because I looked at it and I couldn't understand yeah. what the issue was. But. So, but, and I'm not okay. sure how, how legal ended up coming out with whatever the outcome of that was. I don't know yet. So. Okay. Sorry. Oh, no worries. No, no. I'm glad you went out and looked at it. I'm just curious. Yeah. Okay. Um. Go ahead. Okay, uh, for FY19, which is anytime after July 1st and up until June 30th of 2020. So uh, I'm just making sure that people recognize the fact that everything's not going to get done during this season. Right. Some stuff is going to end up having to happen in the spring. South Main Street, uh, we're going to mill and do an overlay. We're going to do the same thing to Thayer Street, mill and an overlay. Um, we, the town, we're going to retain the, the millings from that because that's that's... Yep. It's good material for it us. Um, Old Main Street in Old Deerfield, it's going to go from end to end. That's going to be um, uh, a mill and an overlay. The millings on that, um, the company's going to take, which is basically we don't pay for the trucking, mm -hmm. and they'll take the millings somewhere else. So, What's your timetable for that? Because Tim Newman just came in, and I was... I'm sorry? What's your timetable for that project? Tim just Spring. came in. I, so I, I, I can't tell you right now because I still got a lot of stuff there I have to do. I got a lot but of But not prep. in September or before September? Spring next year. Okay. So because I've got a lot of work that we have to do. We've got drainage. Okay. We have... Okay. We've got to fix the street. We've got to fix mm -hmm. the drainage. We have to do all the things that need to be done before you actually do the paving yeah. because otherwise right. you're just going to run into the same problems 15 years down the right. road or 10 years down right. the road. So if you're going to do it, do it right. Um, so just can you make sure it's like after Memorial Day and when all the kids are gone? For the spring. For Old the, Maine? For, oh, yeah. for Old Maine. Yeah. Um, I will do my best. Okay. Cause but I'm also not going to be held hostage by, you know what I mean? I know, but I'm just saying the. I mean, obviously, I'm going to try and make sure that, you know, we're not doing this on purpose. We're not doing this during graduations. Right. Of Old Maine Arts. Yeah. Right. Um, it's just huge. But the other side of the coin is, is if I, if, if timing wise, and I'll let everybody know right now, if timing wise, yeah. I have to mill that before graduation and it sits yeah. for two or three weeks before I can go ahead and do an overlay to it mm -hmm. and kids are still there. And if that's how it's going to work to be able to get it done during this, that time frame, you know, within our uh, fiscal year, FY19, then I'm going to do what I have to do to get the job done. So, I mean, obviously mm -hmm. I'll be sensitive to those I'll issues, but. Right. I've also got a job to do. Yeah, so. I know. It's just a huge amount of congestion up there at yep. this, this time of year. Uh, Keats Road, um, we're from the railroad tracks to the end, we're going to do a shim and top. Basically, we're going to shim in the, the low spots and do a top to it. The lower section going from the railroad tracks down to 5 and 10, um, that's going to take some fairly extensive uh, drainage work. In I was there. just going to say, are you gonna, is that drainage our issue or the railroad? That drainage is our issue. It's bleeding right out of the ground. It's coming right out of the okay. road. Um, you can't 
the railroads like got they, nothing to do with that. Oh, it seemed like it got worse when they fixed the tracks. No, no, it's it's been. And the other gets, thing I have really is, is I also have I'm going to end up having to ask because um, that first house, as you're going up the hill on the right hand side, they have gas. Uh, right now, I believe that place is vacant, which hopefully will be vacant when we go ahead and do the work because that gas service that's feeding that hmm. will have to be removed when we do the work if we want to do our work properly. Okay. You know, and again, we have to get, we have to take the material out of there. I mean, I'm sure this thing's sitting on ledge, so we may end up having to do some hole ramming or whatever to be able to get down, get the material in there to make sure that the water does not bleed through. And again, I just want to make sure that the road is done properly. You know? Yep. Great. Um, so that's I don't have take any problem bit. with that, Kevin, because that is a safety issue in the winter time. Yeah. It's exactly. very icy. I know. Yeah. Uh, we, um, unfortunately, Kevin, you have to hurry up here. Cool, we have works a, for me. And then the only other last question I have is a sewer study. Um, you guys voted a while back about uh, going with uh, Dave Prickett, and I'm just kind of curious on where we're at and where we're going with it. I'm excited to get moving. When can I? When can I start moving forward? Yeah, we have when that on the agenda. Yeah, we're that going to is, talk about that right a little bit later. We talked about after the election that we would move forward. So, imminent. Okay. Imminent. Cool. I, I would say yes. All right. So hopefully, maybe by the next selectmen's meeting, we might yes. be able to sign a contract of some kind. Um. To look forward to look at to see what it is. Depending on, uh, I, I want to have a yeah. I want to ha have a meeting with Prickett, you mm -hmm. and Wendy and. All of us, mm -hmm. to just see where we're at, and okay. uh, that's my that's my major goal is to sit with them okay. and you, and Wendy, and this board to to hammer out that plan and get rolling. Okay. Now, we'll just put that on the, the agenda for the thirtieth. Then. I'm sorry. We'll put that on the agenda for the thirtieth. But are you going to want to go ahead and doing the? Do you want? How do you want? Do you want? You want to do this in an open meeting? Do you want to, I mean, obviously, whatever you have, because if you people are going to be here, it's going to be open. But do you want to do right. it during your standard selectman's meeting? Or do you want to have like a to dedicate meeting a, like I'd that like to day, dedicate a separate time. Next week? I, I think, think we should have a special it, meeting. I would think we'd have when a special would, meeting. Uh, okay. All right. Well, pretty detailed stuff. So are stuff. there days? So that way I can start lining Dave up to find out where he's at? We could still do it the 30th, but we could just do it early. Uh... I don't want to just, I don't know how early I can get here. Okay. Do you want to um, do it on No, I can't do the 30th. I got, oh, I can't. Too um, much how about the 29th? Okay. Do you have anything on the 29th? Are you back? Are, we, are you back, Wendy, or not? No, I'm leaving. I'll be gone from Friday to the following Monday. So, um, so it's Memorial do it Day the, is Monday. Right. Um, so why don't we so do it the week of June? Four. Yeah, we can do it the first week and of June. Here's the options. You do it at a meeting or you do it one of you participates. Um, or we just do it at your regular scheduled meeting. I think we got to move this forward. Yes. Uh, I, I, well, I think more than one want to be involved with that. Yeah, There's no, I think issue. we have to, all three of us have to meet together. Then we can put it on the, on the a meeting. Well, it has to be a meeting. Yeah, but <laughs> of course. Well, yeah. Um, we, we could do it any time. I mean, we could do it that Thursday, the 31st. If um, you have, do you have anything on the 31st? Yes. Okay. But I could do the 29th. Um, yeah, but Wendy said that she was. Oh, you're not back at the 29th. I'm just back. So then let's do the, f uh, the following week. Yeah, let's do it the following week of the f week of the 4th. Um, the 6th. Week of June 4th. So what I'll do is I'll reach out today to find out what his availability is. Yeah, that, I can't do it that Wednesday, but any other day. And then day. what I'll do is, how about if I start going back and forth with emails? Sure. What, what dates are, Yep. am I allowed to do that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, Wednesday's not going to work for me either. I have okay. But any meetings. other day that week would be yeah, fine. Yeah, but I'm, I'm available otherwise. Okay. Very good. Great. I'm not. <laughs> so. We'll sort it out. We'll send a doodle poll around, and we'll figure it out. Okay. It's the earliest time that we can. Yeah, and Monday, we'll, and we'll Monday, just Sunday night, I could do it. The whole meeting to yes. trying to sort out where we're going. It's a big topic, okay. for sure. I think we need, it has to be all three of us. Oh, yeah, you definitely, I mean, because I'm sure there's going to be questions you're going to have to have mm -hmm. answered. Right, you know, and we all that, three need to make you know, a decision. You looked at it, you know, you, you, had, the, you had the meeting, the whole mm -hmm. nine yards, um, and that's when you basically said who you're going to go with, 
and now you just need to wrap your Hammer head around what we're doing. The, the process of what it's going to be and what it's going to involve. Yep. Correct? Yeah. All right. Yeah. I just want to decide. make sure that I was able to let him know exactly yeah. what yeah. direction we're I, looking I was at. Got a I'm not going to talk now. We really need to move on right. to yeah. the hearing. We'll, right. we'll sort it yeah. out. Sort thank it you, out. Kevin. Right. We've got. Yes. Have a lovely thank you. evening. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Um, I'm sorry we're having a, a little bit late notice of public hearing. Um, this is for the uh, Cheslix Market LLC at 55C North Main Street in South Deerfield here. Um, would you like me to read the notice? Yes, please. Okay. Notice is hereby given in accordance with prov provisions of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, that the Deerfield Select Board, acting as a local licensing authority, has received an application for a new annual wine and malt beverages off-premises liquor license from Cheslix Market, LLC, located at 55C North Main Street, South Deerfield, and appointment of Nicole Cheslick as the manager. The total indoor area is 2,231 feet, square feet. The pro proposed occupancy is less than 99. In accordance with the aforementioned provisions, the licensing authority of the said town of Deerfield will hold a public hearing in the main meeting room of the Municipal Office Building at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass., on Wednesday, May 16, 2018, at 7.30 p.m. Okay. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Hi. Welcome back. Thank you. I'm Christy Bodine. I'm the attorney for the applicant. I have a couple of things to pass up to you one of which is the affidavit of notice of mailing to the abutters with all the return receipts card. Thank you. Um, the other is a certificate of completion for her for TIPS training. Oh, great. Um, Thank, you. Thank you. And she's seeking one of the limited number of off-premises beer and, beer and wine licenses uh, in Deerfield. Um, do you have any questions uh, well, for the applicant? Tell us about your business. So um, I'm new in the town to this area. No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm opening the market hopefully very, very soon, like maybe possibly this weekend if all Wonderful. licensing goes everything. Yep. Everybody checks off my permits. Um, basically going to have um, meats, deli, produce, bakery, um, breakfast, breakfast sandwiches, things like that, bagels. Um, a coffee bar, deli with meats, um, some prepared foods, um, dairy, and of course, you know, all the other sodas and drinks yep. and stuff like that. And we do have an ice cream bar too. Nice. So, so it'll be scooping ice cream. And so it's probably just a little bit of everything and just like a small town market. Great. Sounds wonderful. And what are your hours going to be? So we're going to open at approximately 5.30 a.m., and we wow. will stay open, depending on, like in the summer, for ice cream and stuff, until 8, 30, 9 o'clock at night. Wow. And then in the winter, we might go to, like, 8 o'clock. But yeah. that's just going to be, you know, when it gets colder and nobody's really out walking around. But those oh, are basically wonderful. the hours. That, yeah. that's, that's great. That is great. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm glad that you had the tips training. That's wonderful. That's and, always. And I have done it, actually, years and years ago. I did it. For a couple other, I managed a restaurant bar in Amherst, so oh. I have done it before. Yeah. So I've been through all of that, and I know what goes into it, especially in Amherst. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so. Well, that's always a big, big thing. For yeah. Me, definitely. So thank you. You managed the Harp for a while, right? When it was. Yes. Was it, was it Mike's Westview? It was Mike's Westview yes. at the time. Yeah. Oh yeah. So. Yeah. Yep. She'd be the Did manager. You You'd be the manager. Oh. Yes. Okay. Did you have any more questions? No questions. <laughs> Welcome to the. Town and wish you all the luck. Thank you. Yes, Thank I you. do too. And you're having SoCo ice cream. Is that what oh, you're yeah, having? Oh yeah, SoCo okay. ice cream, mm -hmm. tandem bagels, indigo coffee. Wow. Yeah, I can't wait for everybody to come in and see everything. Yeah, we've I know cleaned you've been it all hard. up. We've done everything over, so it's like spotless hard. in there. Nice. It's a nice fresh look. It's great. Thank you. That's great. That's a lot of hard work. Oh yes, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I guess um, since we have. Um, license constraints we're going to take this under advisement mm -hmm. and um we were going to put this on probably the agenda for may 30th mm -hmm. to make decisions so you could come then mm -hmm. right um but we'll confirm with you yeah right. okay 
Yep. Um, but we have since we have all the paperwork and everything, um, so we'll close the hearing. Yep. Motion and to close the hearing. Yeah. I'll second. Is there a, no more discussion? All those no. in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Did you no, have well, a question? Mm, just sometimes public shows up, and that's oh, oh just the public. <laughs> <laughs> Was there anybody? Any I'm sorry. Oh. Was there any comments? I just I just didn't. Assume anyone was here anybody. for that. Do you want to make a comment? I just want to make a comment. Thank you. Children's librarian. I'm so excited because kids come to the school and they walk into town. Yes. Yes. And you're the safest. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And I do. And you'll be offering Molly instead of. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I mean, that's basically what we, and we want to do. You know, and I have stuff that I'm gearing towards kids. And, you know, I want it to make it fun. And it's great. That was a good comment, Julie. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, anyway, thank you very yeah. much. And thank we'll you. let you know on okay. um, May 30th. Yeah. When do you will confirm it? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Appreciate it. Thank you. Have a lovely Before evening. Call and check. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> that would be great. Yeah. Okay. okay. Have a great night. Thanks. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. Um, we're going to back up to the one day wine and liquor license and food service permit for Alice Farm. Thank you very much. I'm so sorry That's to make okay. you wait. How are you? I'm How good, are you? Thank you? Good. So this is for a, a one day liquor license for Alice Farm on 526. So I, um, I moved to grant. Oh, but I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, well, we usually have her ask, do you have any, do you want to tell she, us what you're going to do? She has more to tell us today. Yeah. <laughs> do you have more to tell us? I, I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> uh, what, you're, what the plan What you're doing. What are you yeah. doing? Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, well, I haven't even... Okay, so, um, let's see. Hi, my name is Beth. I'm the general manager at the Atlas Farm Store. I've been there for a little over a year. Uh, this uh, the Memorial Day weekend, we're holding a, a Garden Fest weekend. It's an annual event. We've done it before, where the highlight is uh, garden plants. We have a little bit of a, a farmer's market out front of the store. Uh, we have some kids' activities, and uh, it's just a time to celebrate spring. Wonderful. This year, the farm store turns five. We've actually been oh. there for, as Atlas Farm isn't Store for five years, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And I've uh, decided that we would like to offer a chance for the vendors that are attending that little farmer's market, uh, as well as um, some of the vendors that we have in the store, to meet some of the people that have been buying their goods Great for a idea. while in a social environment. And we started, we called it the Atlas Farm Dinner. So if you go over the tracks into the, what I call the back 40, we're going to put a tent back there with tables, have dinner catered, and yeah. uh, we wanted to offer a cash bar. And that's where this gotcha. came from. Uh, the, the event is all weekend long, but the uh, alcohol is only going to be served from 6 until sundown, basically. We're not offering lights. We're not dancing the night away. Right. Um, it'll be uh, ginger libation from you know, local uh, mm -hmm. libations from Greenfield. And then, of course, because our friends um, are right here, uh, Berkshire Brewing, um, we couldn't not offer <laughs> that if we're going to offer alcohol. So Yeah. Great. Is, uh, as part of this one day uh, Liquor license, do we require proof of liability insurance? Yes. So the, the, that is in process. Um, I thank goodness thought to come in last week with even just the initial permit uh, for the liquor license. Then we had to go and get a temporary food license. And we are also working with the tent up, put up license. I know that's, there's another mm -hmm. term for that. Uh, the liquor liability, uh, Dara, over at the main farm is working with our insurance company currently. Um, we filled out the form for that rider. We don't currently carry um, alcohol liability insurance. We do, of course, have liability insurance. Uh, and I just texted her in the audience, and I'm like, up next, what is the... Up, um, <laughs> The latest, uh, we've been working with them, and we'll have a quote and the writer by the end of this week or early next, and the first thing I'll do is pick up the phone and call. I don't, it's not going to not happen. Um, we just found out about this Monday, mm -hmm. and Dara has been in process with that. Maybe it was Friday. Over the Good. weekend, we filled out the forms. Thank you. Yeah. If we go on this, it would be subject. But they would have to yeah. bring it in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, okay. I think it's wonderful. Great. Thank you. Great idea. Um, I move to grant a one-day wine, wine and malt liquor license for May 26, 2018 to Atlas Farm, LLC, 218 Greenfield Road. 
uh, contingent upon producing a certificate of liquor liability. If there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, do you want to move the? I move to grant a food service permit for May 26, 2018 to Atlas Farm LLC, 218 Greenfield Road. And if there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. You just Listen. want to go. No, you, you are <laughs> welcome. You, I forgot if you mentioned who the caterer is, but we have her name on this. Did we, you mention that? I'm sorry. Oh, uh, the caterer. Uh, the, the caterer's name is Laura Bowman. She's with a new company in the area called Blue Door Gatherings. Okay, She's okay. from, she was raised in the area, went to California and came back. She's a lovely, Great. lovely young woman. Yep. Please come. We'd I was love reading the menu, so yeah. <laughs> it sounds great. It would great. be a real highlight, honestly. Um, so let me know if the you know, $35 ticket price is a, is, a, is a problem. Please let me know. And if you can attend, I will yeah. be more than welcome to uh, give you extend That's the exciting. invitation. Oh, we can Thank you. tie their, their pay. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, we can't. <laughs> no. I think it's wonderful. Yeah, that's good. Thank it sounds you. like a great I, event. And I can't yeah, believe it's event. already five years old. I, it's amazing. I, I do want to say, uh, Mr. Camosa, thank you very much. I th understand you and Gideon have some kind of agreement for this year for parking, and I just want to publicly say hello, nice to meet you, and thank you. Yes. And actually, since this is, I, um, it's not a fifty dollar or more, but um, right. yeah. So I would not. We can't accept uh, gifts of a certain. Oh. In a, especially since they're the licensing granting. Yeah, totally right. Can't. <laughs> can't be perceived as a Just bribe. Just ethics training tonight. Yeah. <laughs> my ethics training doesn't expire until July. Oh, yeah, I just finished <laughs> I'm all set. Did you see? We're going to hold on to it until we see the... Yeah, yeah. just give it yeah. to Wendy. <laughs> that, way, well, that way, when you come in for your, with your liquor liability certificate, you can just pick that up. Yeah. Certainly. Um, I will be... Uh, here as soon as I get it. Great. Okay. <laughs> Great. That sounds wonderful. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah, thanks for coming Great. in. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. was nice thanks to see you. Yeah, yeah, good to meet you. Bye-bye. Good Bye. to meet you. We have um, agendas up here, if you want a copy of what no. okay. um, Tim, I'm sorry we're running you, a little Tim? bit late, but come Welcome. on up. Well, this is much more in time than sometimes. Uh, <laughs> Forty years ago, they just talked and talked and talked. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> I want to know what they. Happens. I want to know what they did 150 yeah. years ago. We were still in school. <laughs> I don't know. No, actually, I was out. <laughs> can you t can you tell us what they did 200 years ago? <laughs> yeah. Everybody just did what they wanted. <laughs> right. I think so. <laughs> they hadn't discovered government. <laughs> I'm curious about that. So you need to introduce yourself, Tim, even though we know you and we look forward to seeing you. Uh, Timothy Newman from uh, Pocumpec Valley Memorial Association at uh, Four Memorial and work at Tin Memorial. And thank you for coming. And you are talking about your craft fair in September already again? Yes. Well, actually, this is, this is late. Somehow we got cross-step. I tried to connect with you in February, but I think you've had lots of, lots of business. Because I don't yeah. put it off this late September event of our size doesn't usually, it feels very uncomfortable waiting until <laughs> May <laughs> to find out if there are any problems that have to be addressed. So. Um, well, I, as long as you've coordinated with um, John Pachork, and I, I have no questions even, I've been and Love participated it. and think your craft fair is wonderful, so... Um, so, can I make a motion? Yes. So uh, I move to grant all necessary approvals for the uh, for the annual Old Deerfield Fall Craft Fair, including setup September 18, 20, um, yes. September 18, maybe through the 21st, um, 2018, with the condition with the condition the condition of the traffic and the detail what? officer to be coordinated with here? the Deerfield uh, Chief of Police. I move to grant a, oh, is this the same, or I'm just going to, two, two motions here? Yeah. Two motions, okay. Yes. So that's my first motion. Yeah, you do. If there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. I move to uh, grant a transit vendor license with fees waived. Second motion. And since there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. See, you didn't have to worry.
Well, you never know. <laughs> also, I'd like to extend an invitation to uh, a party we're having on the oh. 10th of June on the front lawn of the museum, 4 to 6. Oh, you can come and meet Professor and Mrs. Hitchcock. They will be there, the, the great scientists that nice. are the basis of our Oh, our exhibit. Fun. It's actually the same exhibit as last year, but we've updated it a little bit. But we thought we'd have a garden party. So Wonderful. Oh, oh that's, been, that's really nice. That's June 10th. You'll get a little 10th? notice in the mail, but I hope you will. What, what time do you typically? Uh, four to six. Four to four six. six. It's a Sunday afternoon. Oh, oh that's... Question. How many people attend the craft fair? It question. depends on the weather. Sure. Um, and actually, the, the, the we're averaging around 6,000. At its peak, though, it was 12. Um, there, you know, the new generation, and there used to be two of them. There was one in June, and yeah, there was one in September. And actually, the one in September is now about the size as the one in um, June. June used to be. Wow. So we still have two up down in West Springfield, and they do bring a lot of nice people to town. And yeah. Uh, yeah. they don't earn what they once did, but they do pay some of our bills, and so we greatly appreciate the community's uh, support of that. Wonderful. Um, actually, I was going to reach out to you because I, I was asked to speak um, in, I think it was June 16th, or maybe it was June 15th, um, up in Shelburne um, about the Shelburne. 250th? Yes, mm -hmm. about did, Shel yeah. Shelburne um, sh um, splitting off from Deerfield. and. I, I know, I was hoping you had some like gossipy kind of story thing that I <laughs> could talk about that would be kind of interesting, not typical history of the town splitting off. And not uh, incendiary either, right? Well, well, you know that land was Indian land. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just think it would be interesting to have some little tidbit that was not typically known and Well, I'll we see what I can find for you. Actually, the per I'm really not a historian. I am. I am the money grabber. I'm the the beggar of fun. I know, but I'm you also I do the education part. But you also have interesting take on things. So I, I we are invited, and I have to figure out something to say. So it would I will be help nice. You. Thank We'd you. Love that. We but would I also, love that. Yeah, I will also tap um, uh, historic Deerfield people because they have uh, Barbara Matthews is the historian in town now. Oh, so wonderful. Oh. She used to work for us as part of many of our ed program grants that we got from TAH and um, NEH and that group. So we, we, uh, as we wound down some of those grants, she went to work next door. So we have access to her. Great. And I'm sure she has. Uh, well, it would be really fun to have, have something that is not typically known or or have some kind of spin on it that was interesting and fun or I, I have one. or happy or whatever. I don't care. Great. I will help. That'd okay. be wonderful. I don't want to go, but I will help you. No, <laughs> no, Actually, no. they approached us to do something as well. They wanted more uh, something on history. But one of our board members is going and oh, will be reading yeah. a proclamation that we as the mother historical organization, not to mention the mother town, yeah. uh, acknowledge uh, their existence. I want to make sure people know that they were part of Deerfield. Yes. <laughs> uh, well, this was emphasizing the split. <laughs> well, you know, that also, That'll be the other side of the question. Right. Yeah. I also would love to chat with you, too. You know, our, our anniversary is coming up in a few mm -hmm. years, so I'd love to get, you know, get together and... and um, we actually have an anniversary um, committee. committee started. We have a couple people that have already volunteered, and we, we really need, it, need to get it going this year. And Is this the uh, 350th? Yes. Yes, 350th. I've been here f going on 50 of those years. <laughs> nice. So. Um, I, I, I actually, I came here, I came and celebrated the 50th, so I'm, I'm kind of, no, want to make sure we have a wicked good party for the Oh, we should. The it would be yeah. hard to match the 300th, though. That, that I was not involved in that, but it was... Spectacular. Well, let's and try. Reaching yeah. out to the native peoples yeah. is very important. Absolutely. And I'm sure the people in Cognawage would love to come back down. They were last here in 2004 oh. to observe the 300th. Okay. Um, and we can we can help you get as a town. There would be uh, expected gifts that you give them when they arrive. Yeah. And um, you have to be very careful. It's a different culture. And sure. Very very traditional, and it was very surprising. Um, tobacco is part of. Yeah, um, the gift that you uh, 
extend to sure. dignitaries. Sure. So maybe we can help you in that way too. Yes, mm -hmm. that would be really wonderful. We should start coordinating on that because we um, want to make sure we're doing everything visiting. right. Is that 22? Um, no, it's 23. 23, yep. It's 23. But we wanted to have the year of 2022 celebrate the whole thing and be educational outreach to kids and have programs and stuff that would run and have um, Chris Chris Collins was going to start interviewing people now for their stories and stuff so we can have a lot of interesting I mean because every year there's a ton of people that well that actually falls into something we're we're starting to work on and I was out in the hallway handing this out maybe bring oh, this up please to, yes. during the town meeting um, I guess I, I didn't get the proper permits, but she didn't throw me out. <laughs> but we're no, trying you didn't to get the energy behind permission. the old town hall restorations. Uh, oh, great. Uh, oh, good. So we're yeah. going in the direction of trying to connect with people's memories um, of that building. And, and I was shocked handing this out at, uh, at the town meeting. Only about one in three people know where that building is. Really? Oh. And you... Uh, work on that. I don't think you, Tim, I don't think you've way. said the name of the building yet. So. The old town hall. For the purposes of the people at home. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually the Newman building. <laughs> Not yet. It has no, we haven't, we will never change its name. It, its history as the, uh, it's actually three town halls. The, that's the core of it. That is 1848. It was a one, one and a half story. They jacked it up and put school rooms underneath it oh. in 1878s and rotated it, used to face the other direction. Wow. Then in 1925, when the academy was splitting off from Dickinson High School and Dickinson Library, um, the Bements put the fancy columns on the front, and wow. it was neoclassical. Neo but yeah. it has layers and layers and layers uh, of uh, local history, and there are people still around. Um, members of the Cheslick family uh, used to nag me, and I wouldn't use the word nag, encouraged me. They had gone courting there because the town used to put on movies oh, really? upstairs. And they would sit there and wow. court. Why don't we? So there's, there's those kind of memories. And then I'm sure that there are other ones. Uh, I know the Stockade Player, a lot of people involved with the Stockade Players are still around. That was a theater group that oh. was there. Well, yeah. when I was doing Halloween parties for the kids in you know, through PTO and <laughs> all those kind of things. We used to have a little string of lights up between the columns, and it was always such a great place to, to, spring, to string the spider webs and the spider. It's just beautiful. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful building. Beautiful. It's wonderful. No, well, and, about a million board. dollars has been invested in it already structurally. It's, it's in, entering. The next stage will be to decide exactly how to divide up the space. On the positive side, it's, it is under historic preservation, but it's gone through so many stages that the rule of retaining the original materials is, is hard to define. Right. Because are you talking 1848, which really are only the beams upstairs, yeah. uh, or is it the woodwork on the second floor from the 1878, or is it the 1925? The 1925 is what we're leaning towards, because that's um, the, the height of the colonial revival when Deerfield, the right. village, became uh, known as a museum long before historic Deerfield, by the way. Okay. Long, long, long. <laughs> wow. But uh, not that we're competing. <laughs> ah, I can't wait to learn more. It's great. Tim, this is wonderful. And um, just try to coordinate with us and see what, however we can help. Well, yeah. it could be part of it's the building itself, um, the 25. Um, date is coming up for its, so it'll yeah. be, it's getting close to its anniversary for its gentrification. Right. Wow. That's great. Thank you so much. Well, thank yeah. you. Yeah, and have for a lovely coming. evening and thank yeah. you for waiting. Not yet. Great. Thanks. See you later. Um, uh, is, uh, I, well, I don't think John Nove, he since no. he came in earlier, He's not going to come back. Yeah, I don't he think. doesn't need to be here. So I just we're we're just going to vote on the um, restoration project. Do you mm -hmm. want to go ahead and do that? Sure. Uh, I move to award Obelisk Restoration Contract to Conserve Art LLC, Francis Miller, Conservator, for the amount of forty nine thousand three hundred and sixty dollars. Is there any further discussion? None. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, is there a contract for us to, start to mm -hmm. sign right now? Uh, which one is this? Okay. There's two. Um, 
I also want to acknowledge and thank, um, you know, there's a letter in there, um, Deerfield Academy for their additional support for this project. Primarily the funds are coming from Community Preservation Act monies. Okay. Um, do you want to, while we're signing this, Wendy, do you want to give your town administrator's report? If you're going to pay attention. Yes, we'll pay attention. <laughs> um, I'm not going to blow you My up. idea, by the way, the connection with Shelburne was, it, it occurred to me the other day that we have more of a kinship with Buckland as Deerfield than Shelburne does. <laughs> That's that. Okay. Um, so I handed you earlier uh, this. <laughs> it just oh, took you me got a second. It? it took me okay. a second. Okay. Sorry. I just got it. <laughs> so I handed you this, which is just something I'm going to try to stay on top of, just so we're all aware of all the things that we need to accomplish. I'm not going to talk about this much right now. I just. Thank you for For your together. consideration, and I would like to keep this as sort of a. A living document that we check things off and move forward as, as uh, get through projects in front of us. So, um, as I mentioned earlier, and you know, I'm going to be away um, from Friday to the following week. I'll be gone all of next week, but I will be checking my email and available by phone and all of that, and I'll check my messages as well. Um, I talked with uh, town clerk Barbara. Hancock about some possible dates for special town meeting. As we've discussed before, we need to, within 90 days of the closings on the parcels that we've sold or about sold and about to sell at um, um, Oxford property, we need to have a special town meeting within 90 days to be able to pay off the loan, mm -hmm. the debt loan for the purchase of that property. So we're still waiting for the second uh, to close, um, but I'm hoping that happens soon and we can figure out a town meeting date because it's not just that simple. We have to work it in with uh, um, registration and things sure. like that, voter registration. So working that out with Barbara. So are um, we looking at Monday as a town meeting or Wednesday? Or? Uh, I think we were looking at a Monday, um, I think. But. Um, Somewhere yeah. either, well, we were hoping for the end of June um, rather than early July, but um, the, the latest we can have it is like early July. Right. But because I think the first due to other scheduling, it was per preferred by the town clerk that we do it in the end of June. So, again, we, are, we have to wait for the closing. I mean, we, if we're necessary, we'd have to have a second right. special town meeting right. if we can't line up everything to, to work that way. Okay. So um, I just wanted to also say about the South County Senior Center. First, I want to thank Sue Corey She's for been doing stepping a up, job. Oh, filling yes. in. Thank it's you, been a Sue, joy to get much. to know her and to work with her and um, to work with Meg Ryan there as well. Yes. And, um, really and Diane Cornwell has been an extraordinary asset in helping us move forward. Yep. Um, I think in this, during this process, we're recognizing how, how important the Senior Center is and how I think we need to really elevate the importance Absolutely. and the, the resources we put into um, that sector of the community, um, yep. which includes me. But anyway, <laughs> um, so on the special town meeting, um, by the way, besides um, the vote on these uh, transfer of the proceeds to paying down the debt, um, I also have, and I, I um, the, um, Capital Improvement Committee is aware um, that we need to look for some, we have to use funds to address the leak, the, leaking roof, roof and soffits station. with the police station. Mm -hmm. So that would be something probably we'd have on there. Um, the other thing um, I wanted to talk about was we were on uh, advice of council looking at, and, and that was in my memo I sent that mm -hmm. I included you on, uh, about how we're proceeding with the marijuana, everything, uh, permitting, licensing, et cetera, host agreement. Um, I've gotten some pushback from um, the folks who are interested in doing business with the town about the town moving forward with um, why is it necessary to have general bylaws in addition to the zoning bylaws. It isn't a requirement. It's something that you could do, and it was recommended by council it just allows for more um, control over what happens. 
So I think this is an ongoing discussion, and I'll share more information with you about that. Um, but it's it's not something we're required to do. I, I've uh, sent out call to other communities. I've called Pat Smith. I'm trying to discern yeah. is is this what other communities are doing and the pros and cons of doing so. But just to alert you that it, I was going down that path because I thought we needed to go down that path. But it's it will be in your plate on your plate to decide whether you wish to do that. Okay. And also, once you do that, then you adopt regulations to go with that. I did find out that Hadley is working on Board of Health regulations. So I'll find out more about that and bring that to you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, you know what, maybe you can um, uh, just put out an email to the Mass Association of uh, Boards of Health, because we are a member, and um, mm -hmm. ask them what what they're doing for regulations. Um, I can't imagine that Hadley's generating everything 100% on their own. Somebody else must have been doing something. Mm -hmm. So maybe you can just send an email out, an inquiry email, and them okay. as well. Um, our, their lawyer is the one that yeah. helped us out. Sharon, I remember her. I was here yeah, at that time, Cheryl Sabara. Cheryl Sabara. Yeah. She's really smart. So. Yeah, well, on that note, as you probably have seen, um, related to all the work that we've done here in Deerfield over the years and all these other towns have done, the state is finally s stepping up on the uh, tobacco sales age. So now what has been done at the local level will become consistent across the yeah. state. Um, but related to this as well, I've asked um, the health age, I've asked Dick Kalashevsky, who's our health agent, to, um, if he could, please put together a list of the kinds of regulations that we really need to look forward and have in place. He came to me with one for uh, tattoo parlors. Um, is there, We've there, looked there... at those on and off for years. Um, right. I, I think those regs are, you know, fairly standard, but I think Kip and Trevor both should look at them right. and see if they have any... Issues well, it's just, I, we, rather than piecemeal, we hear something's going to happen, adopt a regulation, let's see what, you know, in anticipation of things where we need to, where you need to, as a board of health, have, um, you know, you'd like to make sure that things are safe and what, have some standards. Have regulations already regarding tattoo parlors, parlors and things like that that we could just adopt? Or? I, have, I have sample ones from the, that we, Dick we has given me. We have just sample ones that we... Um, well, we put together, because Dick and I went to a class on this, and we just used the sample ones from a different couple different ones we put together. But we never actually, as a board, ever, uh, you know, adopted any of the regulations right. because we felt we didn't really want to encourage it too much. But it seems to be something that we need to look at again, and um, I can try to see if there was any updates that need to be done. But the main main thing is, you know, hygienic practices and stuff like that. So if you could look at the regs and see if you have any questions. Um, mm. I'll see, make sure that we, if there's any updates, we ask around for updates. Okay. Um, Northampton and Amherst usually have, are pretty cutting yeah. edge. No, he gave me some. So yeah, some. good. Uh, I, think they're up, I think they're up to date. Um, also, um, I also want to thank um, public health nurse um, Lisa White for very quickly putting together, she came across a notice uh, about a, some, a grant opportunity yes. Um, yes, she and, was great. and that went out today oh, for um, to the AARP and I forget it was a slash organization. It was a walkability yeah. Right, grant. but it was, a diff it was two different fun yep. foundations and AARP was one of them, but they worked together on this project. So we put in something for great. benches Thank in the you. common. That's um, great. So hopefully that will um, come through for us. But it's very competitive. Very it is. competitive. I know. It's with worth nonprofits the try, who don't have other sources to go. Yeah. So, but we that's great, and I really, really appreciate her. That's doing wonderful. That. Um, that's it. I'll, I will stop there and interrupt at other points during the meeting. If you have okay. any questions okay. for me or concerns, let me know. All right. Um, so then we'll go down to discussion decision. Um, stuff. Um, how about uh, you want to make uh, a Deerfield, Deerfield Academy? Yeah. Right. I move to grant one day wine and malt liquor license to the trustees of Deerfield Academy for four events on campus on May 22nd, June 7th, June 8th, and June 9th. Second. 
Is there any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And here they come again. Skims building? Yep. Yay. Hey, I move the select board accept the gift from Deerfield Academy of the building and related improvements located at Town of Deerfield Assessors Map 159, parcel 1588 Greenfield Road, Deerfield, and in doing so, also release Deerfield Academy from their certain gift agreement dated September 19th, 2017. Second. Um, the only question I had on this, Wendy, is um, did you, by accepting this, did you add, happen to add the, um, the building to our um, property insurance? Uh, w it will be it done. Will be done. We don't own it yet. <laughs> well, if we accept they've, it. They've asked, and we tell them we haven't gotten it yet. And, and they've asked about the church as well. So it's on the radar screen of Maya. They, they know that we're OK, so before we take her. the keys tomorrow, because we're, we're moving to accept the gift okay. tonight. So okay. before we have the keys turned over, we got to have it insured. We need to have it on our insurance policy. So it's both liability and property insurance. Yep. Can't they just do that with the binder, if you call them, in the morning? Yes. Yeah. Yes. But before the keys are actually transferred over, we've got to make sure it's yeah, covered so the value the nobody problem. slips and falls and the building doesn't burn down. Figure out what the value of the building Yeah. Um, you, okay. You just insure it for yep. I'll whatever. send them an invitation yeah. to open house so we can see. Okay. Because I had me, I took a gazillion pictures of the church when we thought it was imminent. So yes. I got that. Um, but Good. Anyway. So By the way, we, 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 we've gotten. A a yes, no, 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 no. <laughs> we, we were just, um, I just want to make sure that you've got Thank that you. Done. Yeah. Okay. If there's no further discussion, then all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Trevor. I, I just want to make sure no, we didn't no, 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 no. I forget just, that. Um, such a generous our, our um, price I think on our insurance actually for next year um, we just heard after town meeting that it's actually going to be a bit a little bit lower so hopefully it will be great a wash at the worst yeah <laughs> um, well it, it shouldn't it's a covered cost in, yeah. the, in the budget of this scams budget so. scams budget will reimburse us so it shouldn't be a problem but that's awesome they would reimburse us for, for the, the, the building, the building insurance. insurance. Because that's part of our rental agreement, and or however we're collecting our money, that's going to be part of what it has to be covered towards. It's a, an expense. We cover it, and it, it's an it's an expense of the. Well, I, I just so I'm clear, I, I think that should be the, the burden of the town of Deerfield. It comes out of our rents. I didn't believe that our. Our Oops. rent agreement nope. with them included things of like insurance and stuff like that that we were going to maintain the building. Oh, we make well. You know, with our, our whatever we charge them for rent right. will, will reflect our costs, and reflection of a cost is in cost the insurance. Right. right. We yeah, not we so are not, we are front. Not, in other words, Sims not paying the insurance bill. No, 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 right. no, no. Correct. No. We okay. we right. pay, but the. Whatever we end up deciding to, this is part of the expense that will be covered, ultimately. We still pay 50% of that because that's our expense or our share, but when Wendy was talking about increase, I just meant that it would be like okay. our other expenses that would be from SCEMS that would be parceled off fairly. Right. Okay, um, next item on the agenda is the FERCOG approval to contract for DPW supplies and services. I'll move to authorize the Franklin Regional Council of Governments okay. to contract on behalf of the town of Deerfield in order to participate in the Franklin Regional Collective Highway Products and Service Program. Second. Um, so Kevin decided that we wanted to do this? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, he's already signed up for some meeting on it, and then I need you to just sign. We'll all fill in the rest. Okay. If there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. That's it, right? He's got a um, couple on the back side. Yeah. You know what? Oops.
Complete streets update. Yep. Um, let me just sign this and pass it to you, then I will. Oh, I'm going to turn it over to okay. Diana for that. Yes. This is, um, so complete streets update and letter of interest. Diana, Hello. thank you for keep going on this. Sure, sure. Um, <clears throat> so as you, you guys are aware, in 2013, you, sorry, you had some discussion. You had some discussion yeah. about complete streets. Um, and you did a, actually a complete streets plan, livability plan, I believe. Um, but then after that, in about 2016, I believe, the state changed their complete streets program, basically. Yes. So now we you're trying to that. get into the new funding program, yes. complete streets. Um, in order to do that, you need to relook at your policy. So we had started to do that, and then um, you know, it just seems like there's you have the the common committee, you have some other folks that are interested in these kinds of improvements. So one of the options with DOT is that if you're not quite ready to submit your policy, and when you do that, it does take them about six weeks to grade the policy and get back to you. So it takes that amount of time for you mm -hmm. to start the next step. If you're not ready to do that yet, there's actually another option where you can put in a letter of intent to accept a policy within a year. Yep. You can upload that instantly into um, the system and once approved by them, which would be a shorter amount of time, then you would also at that point be able to apply for your prioritization plan through the tier two process. So it's basically like doing the policy, but you're basically committing to do the policy, but not submitting the policy right now for scoring. Within a year, you would have to submit the policy. Yeah. But it, it seems like you need, the town needs a little more um, discussion about that, and especially yeah. working with Public Works with Kevin to make sure that you know, you have some consensus about what, what you're going to be doing. doing for yeah, complete streets. Exactly. Cause, and during the priori prioritization planning process, that would be a good time to kind of build some consensus around the policy as well. Right. You know, that sounds wonderful. So it's a great idea for me. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm thrilled, and I want you to know I, I'm so appreciative of you um, doing, following up on the work that we did do so we didn't have to start at ground zero. So thank you. Well, you're welcome. So I will entertain a motion. Um, move to sign the letter of intent for complete streets program. I'll second. If there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Great. Thank you. Great. That's Diana, awesome. thank you. Thank I'm, you I'm really happy. I'm and excited I'm, to get I'm sure there asked. are a ton, a ton of people that are And are as saying, soon as we get that yes. approval, then we can start talking about the prioritization yeah, plan. Yeah, I'd love yep. to get, get moving on that. Yep. would be great. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you. Okay, so the last item on the agenda is reorganization and meeting schedule. So um, I will make a, um, a motion to elect Kip Henry Camosa as chair. I second that motion. Is there any further discussion? Hearing Kip, that? do you have any discussion? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of <laughs> late. It. It's kind of late. <laughs> It'll be interesting. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, no. <laughs> no, no, we're switching chair. Um, so then we have to do a clerk, which is usually the one that just got reelected. So I have. Yay! I'm taking it off of your hands. Thank you. But the only good thing is we still have Diana here, and and Wendy. So hopefully. <laughs> We're Keep not, you in line. Yeah. So you well, mean if these two are not here, then I don't have to take the minutes. You guys oh right. yes. <laughs> but I was doing minutes and all the kinds of stuff. Oh, last year it was awful. Um, okay. So, if you recall, where is the, oh, there? Is the warrant? We were just um, so if you you're make a motion. Yeah. Sorry. Make a mo oh, make a motion to um, elect um, Carolyn S. Clerk. I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. We're done. Um, on the meeting schedule. We have warrants here to sign. Yeah. Well. So um, I want to read those. Well, I just wanted to say, if you recall, under municipal modernization, we, um, you took a vote to allow one of you to sign the warrant if for some reason we weren't having a meeting, if it wasn't an off like week or something like that. Or, yes. And I looked at that. We don't have to, just because your positions have changed, we don't have to change what you voted. We did it based on your availability. Right. Either so one of we're us all, could come we're, in. we're still good with that. Good. Okay. okay. That's really good. Um, you know what I'm talking about? I do. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, um, I've come along and I'm fine. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, I appreciate it in case we get stormed in, you know, winter storm or something. Sometimes it's hard to get down here. Yep. Um, 
so we're going to meet. The next meeting is um, May 30th. So, and we're meeting from now until. Do you want him to take the reins? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. No, it's just we're just doing the schedule. Yes. But um, we're going to meet seven o'clock, right? Until September. I'd appreciate it. Yeah. No, that's not a problem. So Wendy, is that okay? Well, we're still going to do every other week. Yeah. Except for if we have time. Yeah. Yeah. You guys feel like it. So, it. so we're looking at um, May 30th. 13th, uh, 27th. Uh, yep, let's see, one sec here. That's seven, you said. Right. Now, um, the other July 11th. It's my birthday. Oh, I it? can't think of a place I'd rather be. <laughs> Boy, that's sad, Wendy. <laughs> it is sad, Wendy. <laughs> so where did you, you said June, June 13th, June, June no. 27th? Yep, June 27th. That way we've missed the whole 4th of July. So we're down to July 11th. Hang on, one, one sec, one sec. Yeah, so, so the next agenda. I think there's a few. Oh, no, that's okay. <laughs> um, July 11th and July 25th. Wait, 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 July 11th. Trevor has the same issues I do. Yeah, well, she's just got to write, that's I all. I know, she's well, circling, I know. She's just circling numbers here. I know. It's well, good old days. <laughs> I, I, I'm a paper person. Um, the 11th and the 25th. Yep. Yep. The 11th and the 25th of July. 8th and 22nd of August. The only thing I, I can think of hand which could in, impact your more immediate schedule is if you need to sign a warrant for special town meeting. And well, yeah, and, just and, meeting. or well, we have an off one of these off Wednesdays. We might do sewer stuff, whatever. So August eighth, you said. Um, August eighth and the twenty second. Okay. And then we'll just go into the first week of um, September. So it would be September fifth, as it, it's still at seven o'clock. Okay. And then Kip, was it all right if we go down to the nineteenth? We go back to six o'clock. Or do you want to yeah. go no, one more? No, no, that's fine. Okay. I'm still in July. Yeah, right. Oh. She's just in the September already. It's still. So September 5th. September Hang on, 5th. I'm still in August here. Oh, okay. Well, August. Hang on. Hang on. August is the 8th and 22nd. <laughs> and this is all at 7 o'clock. Yep. Can you do it? We're not as And then this is fifth is the fifth going to be a problem for you, um, Trevor, because of school? some of these have probably like the June. I'll, I'll look and see what June's about, but um, Me too. I think I probably. I mean, her. Oh we no, we're not doing the sixth. We're doing the thirteenth, so I'm good there. I'm, I'm still. Doing this. Um, and then they're off all summer, and then probably the fifth they'll have a meeting. But so we're doing September fifth. Yeah, but we could do we could do um, the six if you want. I could go get my calendar, but or we could just do this later. You want to just stay? Maybe all right, yeah. check it out. We can wait well, till May. Yeah. All right, so I'm, I'm good until right August, now, the end of August. Yeah. Okay. We'll do the first meeting in September, whether it's on the fifth or the sixth at seven, mm -hmm. and then when we go down to the nineteenth, we'll switch to six. Is that okay? Yep. Yeah, the sun's going away, so I'm not coming. If, yep. If you would also look at this that I handed yes. out and and. Mark for yourselves, um, and I, I'm going to start moving things forward. Uh, yeah, no, that's fine. Um, from seven to eight. The 19th, you're doing at six, you said? Seven to eight. The 19th 15. would be at six. Okay. Only because we're switching yep. back to the winter schedule. Again. Sure. I'll put the fifth here for now, but then I may move it. Yeah, but we can move it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, do you want to do public comment? Bruce is just dying to do public comment, I can tell. You have anything to say, Bruce? Yeah, I do. Come on. Okay. <laughs> Lay it on us. You were, hesi you were hesitant. <laughs> okay. First, I guess I'd like to reiterate the same thing as you did at the beginning. It was great to see that kind of a turnout for this time of the year for voting. That was, yeah. that was really nice. Um, yeah, it was about three times was, what it normally is. And I was glad to see a kind of, at least it looked to me like there was 
maybe a little bit younger generation at the town meeting for a change, which yeah. I thought was nice as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, one of the things I was wondering, looking on the website on upcoming events, I see something called Creating Resilient Communities. I heard of it, but maybe some people out there, a lot of people probably have not. And if you wanted to maybe give a brief description of what that meeting is. Oh, sure. Um, actually, it's going to be our next meeting is May 22nd um, here at the town hall at 930. It is a combination of federal agencies, state agencies, and the towns up and down the Deerfield River. We have been meeting. I chair it. Um, it is, uh, we've been meeting since December of 2011. It's in response to um, all the issues we've all encountered with Irene. It's to coordinate all the federal and state agencies and, uh, and local efforts so that we can maximize. We do updates on projects that everybody's doing, like Deerfield is applying now for the MVP program grant to do replacement on um, Mill Village culvert, so I'll update the group on that. And our contribution uh, to towards that would leverage, could be used by another group somewhere else in the watershed um, to leverage another project. It, so it's a mul it multiple programs then with, with the right. state and federal government. And the whole government. idea is you don't do duplicate um, efforts. You know each other's projects that are going on because what happens is in the watershed, federal dollars can be matched by state or local dollars and state programs need to be matched by local or federal money. So you have to, by knowing what everybody's doing, you can use each other's projects to leverage the next project or a future project with another group. And okay, thank, thank you, because I, I really oh, was okay. a little unsure. And I I'm mean, sure. uh, Bruce, I can keep going. No, no, I, I said a brief. <laughs> <laughs> but the whole idea is that everybody, you know the federal agencies, they tell you what programs are coming down. This is actually how we heard about the MVP program, and that's how Deerfield became one of the first communities in the whole state that got MVP certification. Well, I've heard the description, but I guess I've never really heard it, yeah. the title of it, Creating Resilient Communities. I, you know, I guess that's why I didn't Well, we had a much together. longer title, but what was happening is Boston was re actually recognizing us as a group, so we had to have a more sound biteable um, name. So okay. we came up with Creating Resilient Communities because it seemed to fit what programs were coming down the pike, and um, Charlie Baker loves it. So he quotes me once in a while on his Instagram. So <laughs> I make sure we have sound biteable stuff. Okay. All right. Um, next question is, uh, evidently the town does not need the uh, $1,875 that uh, was uh, uh, given to the Board of Health for tick testing. For no, that's actually not true, Bruce. What happens is um, we, were, we got the CDC grant. So instead of waiting to July 1st to use town money as a match, we get to you do this tick testing right now. We're hoping the money from the CDC will stretch until July or August. Um, at some point, the money will run out to, to match the tests. But right now, for our residents, it's only $15. They can take, it's almost the $200 test. It will do all the bacterial. Right, right. And um, there's no town match. When the CDC money uh, runs out, which, like I said, I hope we can make it into the, you know, s July, August, or sep even September, hopefully. We'll see how many tests get done. Um, then seamlessly, we will be able to do the still, people will still pay $15, and then we will use our town match of 15 and we'll still get almost $200 tests. So that'll, that'll allow right. hopefully but almost twice the number up, of tests for the I same I set it up money. with Nolan down at UMass so it will be totally uh, seamless and we've now been able to test all the new ticks and the baby ticks and stuff that are coming out now right. which is a huge, usually a huge, um, you know, uh, up uptick like, of ticks in the spring. No pun, no pun intended. Right. And then there's another uptick in ticks in the fall yeah. as just before, right. like September, October, November. Right. So hopefully 
we're going to be able to um, stretch it out. And okay. if there's any leftover money, I'm hoping to use it next spring for tests again in the spring okay. if we can't get CDC money. But I'm, I will attempt to work with um, Katie Brown, our state vet, and um, get another CDC round. The, the basis of the CDC grant was um, the same reason I wanted us to support um, testing was this trending of the secondary bacterial infections, which yeah. are no, so, it's a, it's so a clarification, terrible. you know, because right. I, I mean, yeah. you know, because I, I've been asked, you know, what happened to that money at that point because it wasn't it all it said was, you know, there's no cost to the town anymore, and it didn't say no, that there was it's a no limited cost amount right now, right? And we did right. not have to wait till the July 1st, right? But okay. when the CDC money runs out, and it totally depends on how many people send in tick tests. It's a thousand tick tests yep. um, that will statewide. And okay. so we're hoping. And the other thing I'd like it. to make a comment is I've been looking at some of the threads that are, you know, uh, that are going on in town at this point in town. And, and, you know, there's some good conversation, but there's also some negativity on some of the threads going through on some of the uh, media. And, uh, you know, there's plenty of opportunity for these people that are creating all the negativity to come down to the town hall and volunteer for some of these committees and be part of the, be part of the solution rather than just creating more problems. Uh, and I just think it's a shame that you know that some of these threads are are being so negative. Uh, you know, bringing down you know coming down on committees by a bunch of volunteers that have tried to be do their best when they, how they can. Um, and I don't think any committee member is uh, immune to any kind of constructive criticism. But this just being downright negative against committee members and individuals is is pretty disgusting. And I'd like some of these people that are doing that consider being doing it as constructive criticism and stepping up to the plate and be part of the solution. And because there is openings on various committees, and there's a lot of us that are are older, they would love to see somebody replace us that is younger, that has some new ideas. Mm -hmm. you know, and one of the things that I did see on a couple websites, and I know Wendy has been continually you know, trying to update ours, and I don't remember which towns it was, it was a tab for volunteer opportunities. And they had, um, you know, you just hit the tab, uh, tab and it had uh, uh, openings on different committees, plus, you know, miscellaneous other uh, volunteer opportunities. You know, because people won't take the time to call you or you or you or something right. to find out what's available. But uh, I think there's more and more people using the web than maybe, you know, a tab volunteer opportunities yeah. might be something that, you know, right. We were just about to do that, actually, oh, because okay. this is the reappointment time. Yep. I've asked Pat to just gather up all the information, and I was even talking with Dan Graves today, who was yep. wondering, because he's got four different entities, I believe, that he appoints to. What's so, that? He has four, uh, four entities. Four different yep. appointments he makes, kinds yep. of appointments he makes. Yep. So gather that up for his benefit and then for the board's benefit. Mm. And As um, a I've had a few people contact me. Just to your point. Oh, and, and, I and, guess you're one step ahead. And, yeah. And, yeah. Okay, no, fine. no, we're in sync. No, Bruce, <laughs> I, I agree. Everyone should be, um, I mean, I believe very strongly in being kind and respectful. And um, I hope that people will volunteer. I was pretty excited, actually, um, for this election. There was a lot of last-minute write-ins, which no, people yes, were interested in. Yes. So yeah. it was kind of exciting. So I'm hoping that this will carry forward and mm -hmm. we'll have some more volunteers for, you know, our appointments in the next and I do, month. And I do, too. And that's yeah. what I'm, that's what and I'm saying. And I think that is important, that people participate. So, uh, I, yeah. And, I, again, I believe in participation. So. And that was it. Great. Thank you. I, I have something related to you, since you're chair of the Bylaws Review Advisory Committee. Um, one other item for the special town meeting and, and uh, Barbara Drew Hancock or Town Clerk. I like to remind people who I'm talking about, just if you say Barb, people yeah. who are listening may not have any idea who I'm Absolutely. talking about. But at any rate, I'm brought to my attention our need to formalize the change of the terminology of the board. It was mm -hmm. happened as a result of the end of town meeting several couple of years ago, 
where someone got up when you use the term select board instead of select. Actually, I think it was, yeah. was it you, Julie? No. White, no. I happened to no. watch, I wasn't I here at the was. time, but I watched it and I didn't yeah. know who that was actually. I do know who that is. Um, but at any rate, you did. And it just happened yeah. and it's, we're doing that. But to formalize that, we, we need a bylaw to do that. And um, I have one. And oh, do we really? It's recommended to do that, to make it formal. And you, you wanted that, I think, as well. Is that correct? Uh, yes, I did. It actually, so it brings, I've, got, it, I've got that language. It brings up a kind of a, a, a point because uh, you know, when I was prowling through the vault in there, I found that particular vote. And the way it was written, we have, as a committee, have been writing as, as select board as one, one word. One word. Yeah. And uh, the way it's actually written in the vault, in the archives there, it was voted as two separate words. Mm -hmm. And I started looking, and that, not, not that it makes a whole lot of difference, but I started looking at other, other towns that have done that same conversion, and the majority of them are written as two I words. I always wondered so. that. You know, I I'm actually inquired with that. council, and she said all of her towns now do it. I mean, even though she often does it separate, um, I th quite a few, it, it's a mix. And I think we've yes, been it doing is. it, we've been using it, rather than confuse it, I mean, Yes, because it has been some recent changes. Because it's changes like select are, men, it's one word, you know, so yeah. um, at and any rate. There has been a couple bylaws that have been done recently that had select board as one word mm -hmm. already passed that are in the hmm. updated bylaws anyway, so I guess that would be why. I, I, guess, I guess since we sort of always did it as from select men to select board, I, I mean, I kind of want to keep it select board. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. And, and I don't. I, I guess I don't see the real difference. I mean, because if you read our our laws that the bylaws are passed at town meeting, if a clerk should misspell a word, but because it's written that way, do we accept it that it has to be that way, or we just make the change? You know, I think me. this would be the same. You know? Well, that, that's what that's what we're uh, in the process of doing. Is is we're going through the ones that you know. There again, I attended the meeting that the. Uh, uh, AG's office had to hear, oh, you know, great. and uh, uh, you know it got because we had talked about possibly doing it as a global change, just right, Mass. and it just sounded like more hassle than it was worth because of uh, the, the AG's rules as well as when you go from the regular bylaws into the zoning bylaws. The zoning bylaws, any change there requires a two-thirds vote, whereas the regular ones are only majority. So any place that you change it from selectmen in the zoning would require a two-thirds vote, you know, to just do that. So it's kind of like, okay, let's just back up as we submit, you know, each article going to going forward, just change it one at a time, you know, and, and whatever whatever's in that uh, particular article that we're looking at at this point in time. Well, the article I was looking at to, was to just formally change it from selectmen to select board. Uh, well, and Montague, and get, and get, and in fact, it was Attorney Bodine who sent words. me what Montague did to to accomplish that, and they they're using it as one. Word, just making so. it just making it gender neutral yeah, yeah. throughout. Right. You know. Uh, you know. Any times so it was selectmen, select board, so, uh, board of selectmen, uh, selectmen, plural, selectmen, singular. You know, just getting rid of all that, and making it you know select a board, a board member, if, mm -hmm. depending on uh, how it was. The word. Know, uh, that type of situation. So, so it sounds like we're going to use the Montague one then. You mean two words? Yeah. Yeah. No. Just one word. Yeah. One Stay word. what you've been doing for two years now. Oh, so yeah. so, it, so it it is a mix. I mean, you know, we could different ones. And, and okay. It's kind of so whether well, there is a preference. You will find. Do we have that. every do we town have to does do something? That? Do you want us to make a motion to do that nope. for I'll the? I'll bring. Um, yeah, for I mean, the next town meeting. I don't think it even needs a motion. I mean, you know, because we, we're going to present yeah, I'll, it. I'll, we're going to present it to you, and you're going to have to go forward. Yeah, I'll bring you, you. Yeah, I'll bring it to you for, uh, for the meeting on the thirtieth. Um, just okay. for the discussion. Yeah, you know, any bylaw change has to go through the, you know, anyway. You know, so it's it's kind of like well, this was I thought this was just general discussion, but whatever you feel you need to do. It's like, well, I didn't realize that we had to have a bylaw to change our name. It was just recommended. Yeah. Um, to do it to be consistent. Actually, actually so I did. We'll I did find one in you know, and I can't find it now. Is there is one town that did have a uh, good copy, of it, and they, what they had was definitions. They went through the whole procedure that you know, uh, select board has the same meeting as the Mass General Laws references to board of selectmen and selectmen, et cetera, et cetera. You know, so there's. Mm -hmm. 
and I'm, and I'm trying to find that again. You know, one of those th days I was scanning that it didn't hit on me and all. Oh. So now you want it. It's like, oh, crap. Yeah. And speaking of that, if, if I may, because this came up at the meeting and I was keeping track of the comments at the end, and um, I think it was Mr. Gilmore who actually brought up, or maybe it was someone, following up on all the different things that people mentioned at the end of the meeting, you know, what's the report, asking the select board to report back on those things. And one of those is actively going back and forth right now, which is the farm uh, taxing of personal property, farm property, right? Is that uh, what it is? <laughs> what, that was brought up. Personal um, property. The We're personal property. property. Is um, it real property? Animals, farm equipment, certain, uh, farm animals. Equipment. So that you know, we're looking into that now as a follow-up to that being something that was brought up several years ago, and people are wondering what happened with that. I well, that was I, that was uh, done as an instruction to, the, uh, to right. the officers. Right, and and that's what was brought up at the end of town meeting this year was, what happens to all these instructions to officers? They're still There's, in the archives. <laughs> okay, I'm bringing them out of the archives. I <laughs> took that very on. seriously. And, and you know, we're supposed to have a government study, st uh, uh, right? Uh, and there's a whole bunch of them that uh, uh, never been followed up for at least four or five years that I know mm -hmm. of. You know, they're in the archives. <laughs> All right, Bruce. You only okay. got. I am not chair anymore, but I'm, uh, Wendy is is going to shoot us if we have. Oh, those days yeah. are long. I, you'd be gone no, no, no. way, I, way, way. I, I was ready to give up. <laughs> I felt a few bullets now and then. No. It's just going to be. Yeah. I was ready to give up five minutes she ago. Shoot okay. <laughs> no, I'm hoping we're going to go. When, when it gets cranky if we go Thank you. more than two hours. I get cranky. Thank yes. you, Brad. Thank you. Thank you. We have a motion to adjourn. Oh, Julie. A motion to adjourn. I will nope. second that. No comments. Favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Cap, chair, aye, aye, aye. First vote. <laughs>